All right, we rolling. All right, today we're with Henderson Huggins. And Henderson, where are you from? Tuscaloosa, Alabama. All right. Roll Tide Roll. All the way. All right. <laughs> uh, you traveled a good bit. Did you ever live anywhere else or did you always use this as home? Well, Tuscaloosa is home, but I did a lot of travel. Uh, really, since I was very young, uh, went to school in Talladega. I went to, uh, to a school in Ohio for a short stay and been involved in music most of my life. So in music, you do a lot of traveling. Yeah. All right. Uh, when did you first get interested in music? Oh, I probably was about six or seven years old. Uh, at the school I attended, everybody there was playing piano or something. So I was start taking piano lessons and in the school band, the school chorus, and just continued really from there on. Okay. I know you didn't uh, have your piano in the band. What did you learn to play in the band? When I was in the band, I started in a band. Uh, when I first started in a band, we had a little band in school that I played baritone horn for a little time. And uh, But when I really got serious in the band thing, I, really, I played organ most of the years. Uh, I used to play in a group called the Dominoes, and we did a lot of travel. We really had a show band where we did a lot of big gigs, and that was my organ thing. Uh -huh. And what was the first band that you were ever in? The very first band I played in was a group out of Anniston, Alabama called the Daps. Right. I played piano. And we'd play in some of the worst halls you ever seen, so I had to play an old upright that was pretty well beat up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can remember the days of carrying those B3s up steps. I, I don't relish those days. No, uh, I did that a lot in, in, the, in the Domino's days. Uh, we yeah. had one of these big heavy B3s and Sometimes you had two or three flights of stairs, so you you can imagine what that's like. Oh yeah, I've been there. But uh, out of all the bands you played with, which one made the biggest impression? Which one did you? The Dominoes really was made the biggest impression on me because we did a lot of really what I call show band jobs. Where we had girls singing, we had girls dancing, we had the whole show. And we played for a lot of other entertainers that was out in the field, R&B entertainers. We did a lot of that. Uh huh. And you, you were. Uh, we've been talking about you recorded up in, in shows. Were you with them when you recorded there? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you recorded with Rick Hall. Right. And uh, who were some of the musicians that was on that session? Well, some of the session, the musician that was on the session with at Fame was uh, Barry Beckett. Uh, Pete, uh, Roger on drums, Pete was on guitar. Uh, Barry did the piano licks along with me playing organs and we'd switch up sometime on different instruments. Uh, and uh, we had a bass player named Jerry Bridges, I think was his name. And uh, who all did you get to play with at Muscle Show Sound? We really, uh, we met the, uh, if I can think of the name of these fellas, uh, Hall and Oaks, we got a chance to meet them. Uh, we was got a chance to meet the Carpenters, uh, and uh, we was not on the session with Aretha, but we was there when she was finishing up a session. Same thing with Percy Sledge. All right, and uh, what? Where do you see your music going now? You're getting more press than you have in a long time. Well. Uh, at this stage of my life, I really just like to do something for myself. I've been writing and arranging for a lot of other people in the field. And at this stage, I just want to do something that's kind of give me my own statement. Okay. And uh, I know you've recorded a gospel album and there's something else in the works, isn't it? Yeah, we just finished that and uh, we're getting ready to do another one. Uh, it's gospel. We got some things that we'd like to do with some choirs. Uh, we'd like to do some local things with some of the local musicians and artists around here in Tuscaloosa. Okay. Who do you have in mind? Oh, several choirs. I won't name a few right now, but we're just going to wait until that happens. Okay. I got you. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> you don't want your phone to start ringing. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Why the new interest in Henderson Huggins? It just seems like every time I turn around, your name's been mentioned in the last couple of weeks. I've done a lot of things. Uh, back a few years ago, I was in a movie uh, where Dan Glover and uh, Charles Dutton started in a movie called Honey Dripper. Yeah. Uh, I was the piano player in that movie. Uh, and uh, I've been playing bands and all kind of engagements really for a lot of years. So my name is probably pretty well known for that reason. Right. I, I love that Honey Dripper. I've got a poster around here somewhere. I went out of my way just to do that. Yeah, I like that. That was, uh, we did a lot of travel. We did promotion tours where we had to travel around the country. And uh, I really got the star treatment on that deal, so I like that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you mean so you're not getting that star no, treatment? No, no, no. Well, I, you know, I, I had the limo pick up and the travel through the airports and all that stuff. So that was that was real good for me. I like that. All right. Well, you got your songwriter picking you up now. Most people never get that honor. That's true. <laughs> and, I, and I'm loving him for it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Where do you see your music going? I really think we can move to new heights, uh, another level, really. Uh, the writer by the name of Kenny Walker is the fellow that I'm working with. Uh, he's a real good writer. He writes an awful lot of material and a lot of material for all different types of engagements, different types of songs. Uh, basically, they're gospel songs, but they're more inspirational songs that I think that could fit pretty much any segment of society. I really would just like to see that get out there a little bit more. Okay. That's, and uh, have you, is anybody going to follow in your footsteps? Do you have any little musician, little... No, I, I wish I did, but I don't have it. You don't? Okay. okay. <laughs> no. It's surprising how many musicians fall in their, you know... That's true. Forefathers' right. footstep. Right. But I'm the only one in my family. You are? Okay. All right. All right. All right. I sure appreciate it, and uh, I'll make us all sound good. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, the part about being blind, uh, how did you become blind? I was born blind uh, with a thing called glaucoma, and uh, I was. it was at an early age. I could see enough to move around and see things a little bit. Uh, up until I may have been in my late teens. So I know what, it, what things look like. I know what colors look like and all that type of thing. But uh, I went to the school for the blind. So uh, I learned everything as a blind person should learn. I learned to read braille. Uh, I learned to type. Uh, and later, later years, I learned to operate a computer and do all of the little things that uh, you need to be independent as you can be. Okay, that's great. Was uh, uh, any other, like Ray Charles, was he an inspiration to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very early. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of my main things. I could, uh, I could sit around and kind of copy some of his stuff and go around and play at somebody's house and make them happy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I really, I like Stevie Wonder. Uh, he was a great inspiration to me as I grew up and get to, get to be a young man. Uh, just to see him do the things he was doing and to listen to a lot of his songs was inspirational to me. So uh, he was really a lot of help to me in, in later years. Okay. Well, that's great. All right. Anything else you want to say or you want people to know? Just remember my CD that's coming out. <laughs> you you and, haven't even told me the name of it yet. <laughs> the name of it is In God's Hands. In God's Hands. Okay. okay. All right. I appreciate it.